Listen to me. We are going to walk our way through pages 26 through 28. And you got to get your head around this, okay? Uh, they're trying to help you understand it. The bottom line is we are going to end up with a, a series of formulas that we're going to use that will be fairly easy to use, but they want you to see the logic behind how we get it. And to me, it's cool because we're taking things we learned in Algebra 2, things we already know from trigonometry, and we're going to blend them together to create some new formulas. And you know what? They're not hard formulas. You put them together and you have another, it looks like a complicated formula, it really isn't that hard, okay? So let's go back to even Algebra 1. We learned that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. Do you remember this? m is the slope. b is where does it cross the y-axis. Remember that? Well, if we are talking about an angle here, of course, this is always the initial side. And if I end up at a terminal side being here, in a way, this is like a line going through the origin and going out this way. It's a ray, however, so we're going to cut off this part of the line. It starts here at the origin, goes that way. But I want you to notice this formula says y, the value of y, equals some fraction or number times the value of x plus. Now in this case, because it goes through the origin, we're going to get rid of that because it's plus 0. So we don't even need that. We're going to get rid of that. So m is the slope. Now, we're not really going to figure out what the slope is at this point, so don't get too confused about that. Just remember, m is the slope, and we can relate. We can find the value of y if we know a value for x. <clears throat> so we're going to just take some random point, and without knowing the numbers, we're just going to call it x sub 1 and y sub 1. That just means the x and the y value for our first random point that we just plug in, okay? Obviously, we don't know what the angle is. That's fine. <clears throat> Do you remember that to find the radius, not the radius, the hypotenuse, the length, we um, take the x value, square it, take the y value, square it, add them together, take the square root, okay, going back to Pythagorean's theorem. So again, pulling from what we know from Algebra 2. And then we do the square root of that, that is the, the length, okay? Um, all right, so now we're going to substitute x1 in place of x. We're going to substitute y1 in place of y. However, notice y1 is actually equal to m times x1. So instead of plugging in y1 here, I'm going to plug in what y1 is equal to, which is m x sub 1. Oh. Now what happens when I multiply that out? I get x sub 1 squared. I have to distribute that to both of those, so I get m squared x1 squared. This is all under the square root sign. Now, can I factor this x1 squared out of both of these? Yes, indeed. x1 squared factored out of that, and I have 1 plus m squared. Okay? Now, I'm going to break it up and have the square root of this times the square root of that. Well, the square root of that is just the x1 pops out. So I have x1 square root of 1 plus m squared. Now if you look on page 27, right in the middle of the page, that's exactly the steps that they went through. Okay, so we kind of talked our way through that. <clears throat> we factored out the x1. And remember, this whole thing equals R. <coughs> now let's go back over here and think about sine cosine tangent. 
In a previous page, we learned that sine is the opposite, which is the y value, divided by the r value. Well, what is y? y is, I'm going to substitute m, x sub 1, over x sub 1, 1 plus m squared. Okay, so we're substituting this whole quantity in place of r in this familiar formula. We substituted mx1 in place of the y1. And now do you see something that'll cancel out? Yes, you do. The x1 will cancel the x1. So we just have m over the square root of 1 plus m squared. Now we could do the same thing here for, uh, for cosine. Okay, cosine is just x1 over x sub 1, 1 plus m squared. And now that cancels that, but be careful. We have to keep a 1 on the top because that reminds us that this is in the denominator. Okay? <clears throat> and then you can see the same thing happening for tangent. <clears throat> x1 cancels top and bottom, and you're just left with m. And then, I'm not going to go through the steps, but you can see there on page 27, the cosecant would be the reciprocal of this, and then uh, do the, you know, cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. So they come up with in blue text on page 27 all of those formulas, okay? Did you follow with me? If you were thinking, you had your thinking cap on while we went through page 26 and 27, and you think you understand it, not that you can reproduce it by memory, okay, but that you followed where they came, where they got it from, then you can put a check mark in the yes box on the bottom of page 27, okay? Good. <clears throat> then turn the page, and now you are gonna kinda go through these same steps in figuring out the two problems, two problems, okay, on page 28. And I'm going to stop there because it is actually in my time, 11.45. So I'm going to upload these videos and go home and have some leftover, I'm thinking leftover turkey and mashed potatoes <clears throat> and a yummy green bean casserole that my daughter made. And we'll see how this afternoon goes, see if I have time to come back and do any more on pace 1134. I hope you're doing well as you work through this pace. You are at the middle of the pace. Yay!